All right. We are live. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Hero Labs Live. Coming to you live and direct from the Great White North. Um, <clears throat> closer to the Arctic than a lot of places. Uh, okay. Sorry, I got caught off guard. Anytime I get caught off guard, the bullshit cannon fires, and then it, sometimes it doesn't come out right. So, anyways, uh, welcome back to Hero Labs Live, guys. I'm your host, RT, uh, Random Task 55 on Twitter. I got a new sweatsuit. Long story short, I saw Messi tweeting about this yesterday, but basically this idea of like just wearing the same thing every day. And uh, and I found out years ago that Mark Zuckerberg does this. He just owns like 50 hoodies, the exact same, same t-shirt, same shoes, same pants. And, and when asked about it, he was kind of like, there's so much shit to do today. I'm going to take figuring out what to wear out of the equation. So he finds the perfect thing. My lady bought me a sweatsuit, Under Armour sweatsuit for for uh, Christmas, and I was like, "Honey, this is the perfect thing." So I went to Under Armour and I ordered like six more. So they arrived yesterday. So I'm fired up. Um, work from home, live at home, stay at home. Go outside; it's cold. Wear a sweatsuit. I feel a little naked without my hero gear on today, but it's dirty because I've been wearing it for a week straight while I waited for my new sweatsuits. We're gonna talk. Messi's good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I think he's going to come back on stream. Most most recent report is that he'll be here sometime in the next little while. So keep an eye out <clears throat> for the one and the only Crypto Messiah back on one of our Thursday streams in the near future, possibly next week, possibly the week after. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry about Gensler's face, guys. It was not my idea. <laughs> I told the producer, I was like, let's go with something like this um, as a heading. And then he's like, okay, cool, got it. And then Gensler's face popped up. Man, Gensler looks like what I'd look like if I traded crypto for 50 years. With like a side of smarmy troll. I'm just looking over at it. Uh, anyways, we're going to talk today about, guess what? The Bitcoin ETF. And what's going on with it. I'm not hearing rumors. I'm not on the inside. I'm not in Washington. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing in the market. I have a pretty confident projection of what I see coming in the next few months. Uh, and as with anything, I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to uh, stand corrected. And I think one of the things you should always think about in crypto, one of my favorite sayings is strong opinions loosely held, right? So move with conviction, position yourself with size or whatever, you know what I mean? Like get in position that matches what you think, but don't cling to the things you're thinking of if the market shows you that you are clearly wrong. Strong opinions loosely held. It's a super important concept we're going to get into a little bit today. Um, so what is my opinion? Let's get into it. Uh, let's go look at the Bitcoin chart. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, we have an incredibly big event coming for Bitcoin. Whether it's a delay, whether it's a denial, whether it's a, an approval. I think it's a foregone conclusion that at some point we will have a spot Bitcoin ETF. There's no real debate on that. The big debate is whether it will be today or tomorrow, which is when one of the major deadlines is. And the overwhelming assumption is that they won't just approve or decide on the one tomorrow, January 10th, but rather they will make a broad sweeping decision about all of them tomorrow. It is 90% last I checked approval baked in. That seems reasonable. We started off the week really hot yesterday, coming out of this range after Bitcoin basically consolidated since the beginning of December, through which we got a period of really exciting altcoin price action. Now, there's been, of course, as there would be with any pivotal moment in the market, there's going to be tons of hot takes. Is it a sell the news event? Is it the start of a new paradigm? Is it the beginning of a rally? Well, I can tell you objectively that it's not the beginning of a rally. Bitcoin has been trending up despite its long summary, you know, sell in May and walk away, pause, buy in September blood. So, you know, if you manage to escape the brutality that was last summer um, and actually sold in May and walked away and then like pick some up in the dips in September, you had a pretty great year last year. Um, but due to addictions and other things out of our control, we all stuck around and tried to trade this. Um, Anyways, we've been rallying. We've been rallying for a while. I'd say the rally relating to this ETF stuff started here. 
and it basically barded right back set a stage and it's just been all up and to the right since then leading into the deadline event now i'm not here to sit on one side of the camp or the other to try to you know i think anyone who's like all in on like it's definitely this or it's definitely that like ah, it's it's kind of cringe i don't think it really serves anyone it's usually about selling something right like people that are really hardcore like trying to be the guys who called it they're trying to grow their following usually you click on their links and they've got a paid service or something they're selling so most of that stuff just be aware who's selling you and what they're selling you on i am the guru who can predict everything is usually the underlying messaging and whatever is being sold um and then just be aware that that's bullshit. so uh and there's a lot of tweets that are deleted there's a lot of people who are blocked in the wake of being wrong after you do that stuff because you try to like curate your world to only exist in your understanding of that so with all that said i think it is extremely probable that on the back end of this very momentous occasion we experience a vacuum of excitement in other words a lack of excitement um and we're seeing the signs. Now, let's look objectively, right? Because nobody knows what's going to happen on the back end of this. But objectively, there's a few rules in markets that we can look to historically to help us suss out uh, what may come next. Now, one of the things that happened is we had a very nice altcoin rotation through the latter part of 2023. We had blue chips running first and foremost, where we had Solana really leading the way, capturing people's imagination. And in that sense, it really took over the role of Ethereum. Although, yeah, look at that. Ethereum had a pretty good run too. It just would be like less on a percentage wise. But around that same time, you know, Ethereum went on a 54% run. Solana went 500%. Solana is a smaller coin. It had a lot more hype. But we had a very nice altcoin move. Okay. And one of the golden rules, as I've come to understand it, is in a rally environment, the shit rises last, right? And so when you see like every last little thing, just 10Xing or whatever, like we saw in 2017, um, was like the first really good example of that. It was end of days, right? Now, that's what we saw at the end of 2023. We saw the meme season. Bonk really captured everyone's imagination. I think we can go check out the Bonk chart. Um, and before anyone gets too upset with me, I think we should just be clear. I'm not here to make you happy. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, uh, just to be clear, let's like, let's establish our time frames, right? So when I talk about the excitement's done or there's a vacuum of hype, I'm talking like a few months, which is going to feel like an eternity based on the spoiling that we've just had for the last few months. I'm not talking about 2024, 2025 is a bear market. Okay. I'm talking about what we can expect in the months that follow especially the weeks that follow but well the months that follow i would say I'm, I'm feeling more strongly the further out we go like in the one and two months zone um bonk really led you know i think solana really led and then bonk just exploded and then it was like oh my god like what's the meme coin on every l1 and then we had a really nice l1 rotation um and so you know, while we could, oh, is this logarithmic? Oops, should be looking regular. Um, while we could absolutely, looking at AVAX, be doing some kind of like pump chaser zone, you know, before a continuation, totally a thesis there. Now, if I was sitting around on vacation and then I came back months later, I'd probably jump on here and be like, hey guys, look, the PZZ worked perfectly. So here we are live in action, no chance to uh, do like a, hindsight 2020 analysis i've got to figure out what i want to do here i don't want to buy this pcc right here right now i think long term if i'm a big avax bull and i would say i am an avax bull i think long term positioning my portfolio for the year and year plus that come this would be a great place for me to take my first slice of pie you know take up pick up a little bit say oh shit huge move off the lows huge move with volume really nice ultimately what we'll probably look back and say that was the breakout um so as I'm doing this, you know, sharing this with you guys, I'm thinking like, there's probably a great place to take like my first little bit, you know, say I want to put in a thousand bucks, like maybe here's where I put in a hundred. Um, but I'm looking more to these reload zones. I think all coins are ready to take a cooler. 
I think they're ready to chill. We've already started to kind of see that with um, Bitcoin dominance spiking higher in the last few days, which it should. Presumably, ETF is going to be approved. Presumably, Bitcoin is going to have some flows. And uh, at the very least, the dominance should shift in Bitcoin's favor for a while, whether or not that's up versus USDC or not, or USD. Wow. Fedcoin on my brain. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> objectively, we had a really nice altcoin rotation, right? Blue chips, mid caps, you know, alt L ones, meme coins, and they're cooked. There it is. He said the line, guys, take a drink. They're cooked. Uh, you know, picking on a few of them here. We had a really nice bounce day. Let's see what Dog with Hat's doing today. It's actually rallying again today. That's cool. Nope, it's not. It's pulling back. So it rallied yesterday. Um, you know, you're going to get big pushes up during downtrends, just like during uptrends, you're going to get big dips. Um, I don't think anything that happened yesterday changed my mind about this stuff. And it's like, again, strong opinions loosely held, but there's been zero invalidation. Don't you dare compare me to this, uh, capo fellow. Uh, it sounds like the same though, doesn't it? It's like nothing's changed. I've not been invalidated. Um, but I guess I should also point out to be abundantly clear for those of you who are not in the pit, because I share screen caps of my pie chart of my allocation of assets. I am in, uh, well, let's just look, let's not try to remember it. Let's just look exactly where I'm at right now. Just so we're super clear on this. So I'm 40% Bitcoin right now, 40% DSO, and then three and a half percent Solana and then down from there you know, three and a half to 4% cash. So I'm very long right now. So I guess I should say that um, because we haven't had the news yet, right? What kind of sell the news or would I be if I wasn't long into the biggest friggin' news event of ever, right? That just seems silly to me. So let's be clear, but here's how I de-risk without going to cash. And this is maybe a really helpful thing for people. Um, again, not financial advice. This is what I'm doing. This is what I think is coming. And so this is how I'm preparing for it. It's very easy. Uh, and we can go off the charts for a sec here. I'm going to use my hands. Uh, but it's very easy to get spread out throughout all coin rotation season, right? Because every chat you go in, every tweet you look at, there's some new guy with some cool idea. And you see a lot of guys saying like, oh man, I don't even have any cash left. I'm going to have to sell some of this to get some of that. But what happens is over time, you end up spread out into the dark regions of DeFi, right? You're like picking up this coin, picking up that coin. You're sitting on 10 meme coins on 20 chains, 20 meme coins on 10 chains, whatever. And so first of all, those are the things that tend to dump first. So by the time, if there is an established decision in the market where it's like, oh, well, we had the news. Let's say, you know, the news was great. Bitcoin just like ripped higher. Maybe it had one dip and then it ripped higher because the first week or two of flows were coming back very positively, right? We had billions of dollars rolling into these ETFs. And then there's some exhaustion. And then, we're just, ooh, ooh. and then what? Right? And then there's a lull and we get some bearish market structure. And then by the time, if that were to happen, and that is what I think is going to happen, um, by the time that happens, all coins are probably all going to be chilling in their reload zones. They're going to be nuked already. They're already happening. It's already happening, right? And so that's part of what's helping me. Like it's almost confirming a little bit as we see Bitcoin dominance rally. We see the alt BTC pairs coming off. We see alt USD pairs coming off. Um, big time on Sunday, big bounce on Monday, more coming off today. You know, a lot of red on here. There's going to be some outliers. I really like HNT's price action today, although I still think this is just going to be a, you know, a little bit of a, a wick looking back, but who knows? Uh, happy to be wrong on that one. Um, you know, I have a huge position in DSO just because of their focus sale. We've talked extensively about that. I just think there's a catalyst there. I think the valuation is totally crooked on this. And I'm just, I'm thinking it more as like, how much can I buy while it's under 50 bucks without, and then really while it's under 100, while it's under 500. Like I, I, just th I think this thing's going to reprice very ridiculously. So I'm building an outsized position. A um, bit of a unique situation here. Typically would never be 40% in an altcoin. Uh, but it's also gone up quite a bit, right? So its percentage is growing. I'm just not selling. Not fucking selling. Not fucking selling. 
Um, T is looking good. Way, you know, way not cooked like the other ones. Like the other one, there's a lot of coins with bearish market structure already. Tia is not one of them. Say is not one of them. I think it will be soon. Um, it's had a really nice rally. Came into an 887 chaos. Whether or not it's going higher or not, I don't care. I'm out by here because this is just a great opportunity to get paid for a trade well done. And the cool thing is, if this ring really did come off in totally normal crypto fashion, it's a pretty good chance I can be buying it down here. And everyone's like, no, man, it's the future. No way it's going that low. Cool story. I heard it before. I'll probably pick it up down there. Um, and then, you know, be prepared for its next big rally, which should be exponentially larger than the one we just had. Uh, MNT. Is a ETH L2 that I'm interested in. It's Bybit's ETH L2. So like this one does not have bearish structure. I mean, I guess kind of, but I, I, this one looks a little better. Anyways, I don't own any of these anymore. Uh, I sold them all through the weekend. I think Friday. Actually, I kind of wrapped up my week. I only had a couple left. So to go back to where I started. Sorry, I got a little off track there down the rabbit hole. How I de-risk de -risk is just moving into like consolidating my portfolio. Still long, but in Bitcoin. Right? There's a time and a place, right? Trading this market is about riding the waves, riding the ebb and flow, rotating through what's hot, what you expect to be hot next, what you expect is done being hot for a little while. I think the Solana rotation was fantastic. I think Solana is going to do great things through the next years. I think it's going to go much, much higher, possibly sooner than I think. Um, but what I saw in the Solana ecosystem was like a strong rotation right out to the end of the risk curve. Then they all collapsed. And that's typically where you just get a period of consolidation in the ecosystem, in the major, in this case, Solana. So it did come in and tag this, um, this pump chaser zone. So if that's all we get and we just go higher, like that's freaking sweet. Um, it's 3% of my portfolio. So it's like smaller, but it's a free bag and, um, you know, it's a risk I'm willing to take. So... You know, this one very well could be bull flagging, but again, to not get into analysis paralysis, I think the main thing that I'm thinking of here is we saw the strong rotation through the end of the year. We have a massive catalyst coming up. It's probably going to rip up through it. It's probably going to wreck any bears who try to short it on the day. It might even wreck some bears who try to short it the next week. We'll get news reports. Um, the, okay, we, maybe we don't get flows in week one and two, right? Because there's also... Let me pull something up. This is an interesting thing. Bloomberg uh, Crypto tweeted something out yesterday and then deleted it. I went to look at it. My buddy shared this with me. Um, and then and then I went to look for it on Twitter and it was gone. But 29,000 people, 23,000 people saw it. Um, now, I don't know. You know, I don't follow these guys. I started following them now because I never actually heard of them. But BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF product has been cleared and will commence market entrance Q2 2024, according to spokesperson. Why was it deleted? Is it real? I don't know. But it made me think like Q2, that would actually be really sweet because that would mean we'd get the approval. And much like I'm talking about this whole stream, I expect there to be like a vacuum of excitement following that where there's just not a whole lot short term to look forward to. There's going to be a lot of speculation, but you guys know this, right? It's like uh, the classic like, ERC 20 ICO and then they're like oh mainnet next month and then it's like whoa and the mainnet hype and the price goes up and everyone looks at the website gets bullish on the product but the mainnet goes live there's a token swap from ERC 20 to native new thing nobody gives a shit and there's certainly no major demand there so it's the same kind of psychological buy rumor sell news is a hundred percent going to be at play here now exactly how that plays out in price is anyone's deal but I mean objectively that's what's happening right now People are buying this because of the rumor that there will be an approval. Once that news comes, I don't see any massive wave of money that's been waiting. It's going to be like, ah, yes. And that's going to push us to new highs. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So if you want to be on the team that uh, is against all of history, go for it. Um, but based on everything I'm seeing and everything else and a lot of the cope I'm seeing on timelines about how this time's different, like it's, it's all so beautiful. It's all so poetic. I'm going to catch my breath. Check the chat. Check the chat. Check the chain. Cabo's been longing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing, yeah, the meme guy who was shorting the whole way up suddenly is longing things. I don't know. I, I really, I'm actually amazed, first off, who's still talking about that guy? Like how many people? I mean, it's a fun meme. I can't believe how much press the guy's getting. 
Um, everyone seems to know every move he makes. And if he's become a big fade, so be it. But according to the chat, he has been longing stuff. So I don't know. Um, now, here's the really good news about if this is the way it plays out. I'm just going to leave this squiggly on for today just because it, it seems like a reasonable way. And this is actually, this, this is more bullish than I'm thinking. This is me saying I could be wrong, but still be right. You know what I mean? Um, you know, being wrong and being right is not really my goal. I like to be on the right side of moves, um, but it's more about like making money. So I'm sitting in mostly Bitcoin. I've got a huge bag of DSO percentage wise. And I guess the last thing I wanted to say on the point of how to de-risk while staying out of cash is to just getting consolidated. So like I like to be like five or six clicks away from cash. And that way, should there ever be a shift, should there ever be a point where I'm like, okay, fuck, I was wrong. I need to get out. I need to get to cash. I'm not spending three hours. And I've done this before in previous situations where I'm spending three, sometimes four hours trying to like de-risk my portfolio because it's so spread out across chains and in staking contracts and on this chain and through that bridge. And of course, on the days that you sometimes feel compelled to make those decisions, gas fees are high, queues are long, things are jammed up, withdrawals are backed up. Right. And so getting ahead of what is, I just want to say almost certainly, um, and I always leave almost in there because I'm not one to uh, guarantee much, but almost certainly we just get a lull after this. Some major excitement through the event. We're seeing it in advance, which actually ironically makes it more likely to be the top for now. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think it could very well just be bank and then cooked and, and down. I think that's a little too bearish. I actually think that there's going to be a lot of hot press that comes with the approvals, and that should maybe even stretch us out for a week or two. Um, but eventually, I think inertia dies on here. Volume dies near the highs. It all makes perfect sense from a technical perspective too, right? Looking back to history, we just get these nice big moves into short reload zones and then chill out through them. I think I had a squiggly something to that effect. Oh, Dalai Lama. <laughs> Hello. No, this was a this was a this was a post I made on the Diamond app the other day. Something about Dalai Lama incoming. Oh, for now it actually did kind of nail the top, but I don't know. It'd be pretty gross if we don't go any higher from here. I think we will. I think we'll get the news and it'll be trading above some levels. But um, the point is I am very comfortable being moved mostly into Bitcoin, obviously, because there's a Bitcoin catalyst. Altcoins already bleeding out versus Bitcoin. Doesn't make sense to be in them. I kind of just got, I got, I started doing that once I saw the meme coins um, getting nuked. Um, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Weiner. I've got to, got to pull up the uh, used car. Uh, you know, used car is already down, right? It's already down in the reload zone, even if, you ignore this huge wick. Um, so it's actually in an area that I said last stream that I'd be looking to buy. I just don't think that there's a meme season coming anytime soon. We just had one. We just had one and it got a full max horizontal dilution of any trillion, you know, trillion different names of garbage coins. So yeah, I think the strongest ones will settle and chill and someday come back. Um, but as you guys know, you know, typically it's just going to be this phenomenon for like 99% of them. And then some really cool ones will come back. Uh, Doge tended to come back every bull market for like however many years, but it was also POW. It was a much different thing than some of these quickly spun up SPLs. Um, Bonk, sick bounce yesterday. It's going to be around. It's probably going to stay Solana's flagship meme coin for a very long time. Um, volume suggests that this could be a significant area for it. Um, and so, you know, there's definitely going to be some cool bounce trades. I think everyone in the pit was looking for the bounce on Monday. So shout out to the pit for, for nailing that. Uh, I spent all of Monday getting dunked on by the homies in the pit because I came in hot Sunday night during some of the downside, just being like, these things are all cooked. Um, but just to point out at the end of my rant, I said, we're probably due for a big bounce day, but midterm, there's just really no mania in our near future again for a little while. Now that's great news. This is what I was going to say a second ago. Yeah. So like Bonk is in the reload zone. So, and it's bouncing on volume. So it's probably closer to the low than the high. Um, 
but you know what does that look like does it like you know some kind of shit through here and then eventually and the longer this process the better right the longer this consolidation the stronger the move that will come um this would take us out to march the happening is probably somewhere all the way out here um major moves in markets in this market in particular start with bitcoin start with the high caps they end with the smaller shittier mimi low caps so was this the start of the end right for that cycle within the cycle within the cycle right so i think it gets lost on a lot of people having these debates where like that was the top and then they're like no it's 2024 25 that's bull market years and it's like yeah so what time frame are we talking about i mean this was a clear as day mania like remember the saga phones were getting sold out every exchange was listing the the bonk the other dog tokens on every other chain were ripping i mean i don't think anyone was sitting here saying like this is the start of a new rally but every accountant was in a fairly big agreement like oh like saga phone sellouts mark the top um and so i think bonk's going to trade higher than that point in the next two years and so for me not like this is the one that i need to be long on but for me any coin like this i'm just like okay so when can i expect the next really juicy rally um because i don't really want to trade like 20 percent scout bonk uh, bounce days i really don't i want to position my portfolio long for big swings like this and i want to get out and pay myself and then i want to wait because usually you have to wait longer than you want, right? Hands up if you historically race back into really good assets way too early, get nuked, get puked on, get bored, chill, 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 ignore, 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 forget to be back in and then miss the rally. Hands up. Me and you don't lie. In fact, that's what happened to me and a lot of the guys in the pit back here. Uh, we were in the pit seeing this i think i was ignoring it here and then as it came into the reload zone of this w i was kind of like trying to long it trying to long it and i finally cut my bag here and i never looked back and then of course i felt very validated by this because i was like see it's a garbage but you know missed it All right this is a little too early to the trough won't make that mistake again won't trap me so you know that's the thesis that's the idea what to expect after the bitcoin etf approval uh long term expect massive capital inflows expect wealth managers to start recommending it to their clients expect the etf um companies running them you know the funds at blackrock fidelity van eck like expect them to fight over the pie and market the shit out of it and rush yes 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 it's gonna be a gold rush over time in the weeks that follow in the month or two that follows i would expect cool down disappointment and in and, and regardless of what that looks like on bitcoin uh whether that's you know a large retracement or just a silly slow boring annoying one um i i'm feeling very confident i would say right up there with how confident i am it will be approved i am equally as confident that uh it won't race to all-time highs in the weeks that follow the writing's on the wall guys so anyways not here to convince anyone i think i think most people would just be better served by positioning themselves for longer term periods i think trying to play through these swings is uh especially if you like have a full-time job this is not really your thing you're kind of like hey i'm gonna listen to 10 different people's ideas and mash them together and try to get some semblance of what i should do with myself probably end up net down versus just holding you know some of the stronger assets um but if i had to pick i'd say like this is kind of what we get that's it i mean that's not it for the show but that's that's the main crux of the idea and in a really sick twisted sense of irony we might even get a very similar relative bounce uh this one came sooner so people are you know some people say it's not relevant it's it is relevant uh i don't think timing matters as much here the fact is <clears throat> we had an intense bear market through 2018 almost lasted the exact same amount of time as this last one we had a very intense retracement back up into the high 618 
high time frame 618 and then we just had a period of boredom we went through the happening yes there was a massive covid nuke that i even you know, btc jack sparrow swears had nothing to do with covid says it was just a market physics type thing that needed to happen uh, i tend to believe him he's a smart guy point is we call it the covid dump uh, whether or not we need to have something like that china invades taiwan who knows i'm uh, hearing buzz there but that's not new you know is there a big dump i don't know Would, will circa win his bet with the mg about a 40 percent day i don't know but expect i'm expecting this kind of cooling and that's okay in fact it's going back again there's great news for those who made money in the last little while um and then have now paid themselves i think that's great news there's nothing better than making money paying yourself taking some time off or like you know getting to chill for a little bit and then getting to get back into positions at like discounted you know like missing out on the shitty part uh we've got a pretty crystal clear catalyst here that's kind of providing us a guide in that sense um providing me a guide in that sense and and then as usual for context and uh, full disclosure because i invest in the space through my fund um like i said in the chat yesterday like i'm always long i'm always long and and i think i think you could have the equivalent i think someone could have the equivalent of that by just having some sort of like holdle bags right you're like i banged out a double on this i got a free position i stuffed it into a hard wallet or a cold wallet and i'm just like i'm not touching that and then you have a kind of like that liquid portfolio that you're trading more actively and it can be in cash oh my god the fear of things moving without me well you still got all those bags right so i'm always going to have some intact length uh, i'm not rushing to sell my stocks i did actually just take a double oh let's go see those where are they here i did just bang out a double on coin i was reluctant to take it um because the approval hadn't happened yet i'm just super bullish on coin i almost didn't want to take it but it was a big position and it was at a double it actually went well over a double and then it dipped to start the year and i was like nah. my double was like around 156 so in this little squeeze back up i took it so i've got a free position in coin now um obviously looking to get that back i think that cash could be rotated into some other names i don't have like micro strategy also coming off here signal 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 apparently it was called overvalued recently They've taken on a lot of debt i heard I, I don't know the ins and outs of all that kind of stuff don't come to the show asking me about that stuff but uh there's probably you know there's probably some baked in risk with a company like micro strategies versus just raw bitcoin and, and michael saylor might be the first guy to tell you that except for i bet legally he can't because that would be like you know not helping out his shareholders but uh you know there's a few there's a few of these btc type stocks that i don't own so i'm going to take to those coin profits uh the free position is still intact i'm going to be holding that like mid 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 term probably like years so maybe long term is that long term yeah long term riot got a free position um earlier in the year kind of fr up from here to here same thing with mara which is admittedly outperforming riot quite a bit um I think I like picked up here, got the free position there. Something like that. Yeah, that's about 110%. So like, you know, so I've got some free bags here. Again, they're they're probably going to track Bitcoin pretty well. Not selling those. Galaxy, same thing, free position. So going to maintain length. It's an important key piece to take away here. Mr. Uh, RT will not be short on this market anytime soon, but my trade account is definitely going to be it's, it's like I'm close to the exit right now. Let's just put it that way. I'm close to the exit by choice. New all-time high post having Like, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Through the end of this year, through the mid part of this year, through the spring of this year, maybe. I think we could see some really cool rallying. But my guess is a more painful than you'd like to think period of cooling. Let's put it that way. Following this hype. Um. And for fun, for the sake of a predictor, let's say the approval is met with a large spike and then a hard dump and then it tracks higher and there's like a week of just like absolute dunking on the sell the news crowd and then it stalls out and then it roasts. 
and then it roasts and then it roasts and then it chills and it's really boring for a while. Let's do that for fun. It's always nice to throw out my purest form of prediction is that we, we get, I get dunked on pretty hard before anything really plays out in, in, in the direction that I'm thinking. Wouldn't that be poetic? So one man's opinion. This is just, this is just one man's opinion. Um, who knows what's going to happen? I'll tell you this though, more than any of this short term, trying to figure out how to optimize for this particular situation, be close to the exit for me, be in Bitcoin for me, be in high beta Bitcoin, like stacks, do so for its own reasons, which we should do a whole stream about. Um, for anyone who's dying to know, I like DSO. And there's one day and 21 hours left until their sale opens. The sale is going to run much longer than I originally thought. I was picturing it being like one week here, 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 maybe a three to four week sale with various bonus amount windows. Um, but the date now for launch of the app, which would mark the end of the sale, has actually tentatively been set for June 13th. And in that mentioning, they said, you know, it could come much sooner, but that's like, that's them giving themselves some space and time. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I think, you know, I don't know how that makes me feel. It is what it is. So who cares what it feels like? Um, I think if it was a shorter sale window, then there would be like a more bit of a concentrated trade in there. Hype wise, token price wise. Um, fuck it. We'll talk about it right now. Um, with a prolonged window, I think you get potentially like this was the rally into it and then whatever. I don't know. As Nader pointed out, and I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, sir. I don't think I'm pronouncing it correctly based on the talk you had and you were introduced as something else. Anyways, I really should figure that out. Um, but I've only seen your name in text. So anyways, he, uh, the founder pointed out that, uh, you know, that extended window actually does give a lot of room for marketing and hype and, and sort of spreading the idea. Cause obviously when the app goes live, they would like to have the token in as many hands as possible. They would like to have as many users signing up as possible. They would like to, you know, massively grow, um, this wait list, which I'm already on, but you know, sticking your email in here and submitting like that, all of that space and time through this type of sale is going to, is going to give, um, room for that to grow. And so that makes a lot of sense. Um, don't really care about the price action in the meantime. I think there's three trades here or three opportunities. And we touched on these. I don't know if we touched on these on stream or if I touched on them on a call. I am invested in DSO. Yeah. Sean Pendleton asked. Yes, I bought. I had a bag from way, 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 way back. The initial bonding curve. I was, I was minting it with Bitcoin back in whatever year it was, 2021, 22. I don't know. I, f I totally forget uh, how long ago it was. Probably 21. And, and I held a free position of it all the way through this and I picked some up through here. And then because everything else in the market was moving and this thing was a stable coin and I figured I could always come back to it. I ironically sold my bag right here and then I bought it back right here. And you know what? At first I was like, oh, that's dumb, but actually kind of makes sense. I don't mind that. Um, as a trader, you know, capital is your friend. This was my like second largest bag through all this and it was doing nothing. So as a trader, I was like, damn, I could put this capital to work and then I could come back. And then God bless him, Rob Levy came back on stream, refocused me on it. It had just moved up 20%. And I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm getting back in. Uh, but full disclosure, I've been buying there. I bought here. I bought here. And I bought here. And I even bought some there. <laughs> so the tiniest little bit of my last buys was underwater for a few days through Sunday. But I don't really care um, because I think this thing is going to be repriced so aggressively over the next two years. It is my strongest thesis. Um, decentralized social media just makes sense. And there's not too many players in the game. And the ones that there are aren't very good. These guys have been heads down, baking, cooking, serving up. Uh, well, no, now they're about to be serving up. And so this is their first app, but the chain itself is designed to host many, many apps, including file storage. Hashtag Filecoin, hashtag 10x from here, just to match market caps, just on that one use case, right? So I think this thing is just heinously undervalued. And I'm thinking more of a, a valuation trade, right? Is it going to be a top 25? When it's a top 50, let's talk about me taking profit. If it's a top 10, let's talk about me taking profit. 
Um, let's not worry too many, you know, about the levels. Having said that, <clears throat> there's three trades here that I see as far as like how to play this sale if you want to not just for the sake of buying it. So the sale opens up there. Let's say it goes all the way to its finish date, which is tentatively set at the, oops, that's not the tool. Uh, let's say it does go all the way to the 13th right here. So here's a period where the marketing engine is ramping up, where there is tokens, focus tokens being purchased. They have to be bought with DSO. Um, but you can buy them through Hero Swap, not HXRO, um, but Hero. Shout out to uh, 69420 on our channel, by the way. Thanks, guys, for subscribing. If you haven't already, you can do it now. Mess up our subscription count. Take us out of the 69, put us in 70. Sign up now. It's free. Okay. There was my plug. Um, instant autonomous cross train swaps. So, this is the DEX that lives on DSO. Um, so any of these assets, as far as I know, I actually didn't see Sui and AVAX on the list for the ad or ad, um, post, but like Solana, Ethereum, USDC, DSO. Now, any of those assets that are used that are not DSO, say I go and I ape in some USDC to the bonding curve, Hero Swap will convert that to DSO, AKA buy pressure in the market, confirmed it's not treasury. It is going to be directly bought from centralized exchanges. And then that will be thrown into the bonding curve. Focus tokens come out. And then somebody comes in with Solana. Directly from Solana, they connect their wallet to HeroSwap and they are into the sale page, I guess. And then they buy focus tokens with their Solana. On the back end, that Solana gets converted through HeroSwap into DSO tokens, which again, purchased from centralized exchanges, Gate, Coinbase. Um, so all of this buying of focus, unless it's done directly with pre-owned or already owned DSO tokens, um, it will act as buy pressure on DSO. And so where I keep going back to like, there's three trades, um, you know, what does price action look like? Let's just get really parabola-y. That doesn't even make sense um, because it shouldn't really come off. Well, there will be people doing this trade, right? There'll be people that are like, I don't care about focus. I'm just going to trade this asset. And so I think through this period of the sale, we could see some upside. Um, and then I think there'll be some, you know, people gaming the sale, not really caring about the focus token itself. And so you might see some selling off before the end of the sale. Be aware of that. That's like, I'm trying to think through the game theory of how this is going to you know, be human behavior will impact this. And then once the app goes live, again, we're just assuming that it's all the way out here at the June 13th deadline they gave. Um, once that app goes live, anyone who bought focus using a DSO token, they get a bonus, right? So let's say week one, there's a 50% bonus. They changed that wording from discount to bonus because what it means is just say like you put in, well, I'll just get some visuals here. Just say I put in 1K to the sale. Okay. Say I put in 1K to the sale. I'm going to get 2K worth of focus. It'll be more th than that because it's 0 0.001 per. So it'll be like 200,000 focus tokens or something, whatever that is. Um, whatever it is you kids are doing these days. But half of that will be liquid right away, right? Because that's the ones I bought. Well, liquid right at the end when, when the thing goes live. So 50% instantly liquid upon launch. And then 50% locked for four years uh plus one year linear vest thereafter that's that's the gist right now that's if i buy in this first week i think it's one week that that 50 percent bonus exists and then presumably there will be a new bonus for some period of time and then a new bonus for some period of time and then a new bonus for some period of time now why is this important well the second trade that exists, right? The first one is to just buy DSO before the sale, enjoy the hype that the sale will bring and some potential buy pressure that the sale will cause and then get out before the end of the sale and there's your trade. You didn't buy focus. You don't care about DSO, but you did the thing. You, you traded the price action. That's a trade. I think that's going to exist here. Um, that's probably going to be one play that could be done. 
The downside of that is at the end of all that trading, you don't have any DSO and you don't get any focus tokens. So at most, I would do that with some small trade amount percentage wise. Now, the reason I'm talking about this trade idea number two is because there are going to be bonus arbitrageurs, almost guaranteed. Now, what does that mean? It means somebody who's going to come in here, they're going to scoop up this 50% bonus, right? So say they say, bye, 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 day one. And as soon as the sale ends, it could be here, they could launch sooner. But whenever that sale ends, remember, there's going to be an infinite bid at the buy price in DSO terms, key part, in DSO terms. So if I put in 10 DSO, I get a 50% bonus. I get 20 DSO worth of tokens, some locked, some not. Once the app goes live, I can take those tokens and I can sell them back into the bonding curve and I can get my 10 DSO back. They've all but guaranteed that because all the DSO that goes into the bonding curve uh, is going to stay in the bonding curve. So at any point, you can go back and, and just essentially say, I want a refund. Now, you may be down in USD. And I say that because I expect this to rally the price through the sale. Now, this is $360, guys. This is not a prediction on the price of DSO through the sale. This is just trying to give you some visuals of whatever. Don't you know? Don't come at me about exactly what price is and stuff. I don't do that. Should probably not be on logarithmic. That'll help. See, so, yeah. <laughs> not on logarithmic. This gets a little crazier. Wow. I did not know I was on log scale. Okay, so that looks different. Uh, it's hard to be accurate while also focusing, while also talking, and also freestyling here. So let's just... Wow, that logarithmic got crazy. Because um, I don't want to be the guy on here making absurd comments. I'm really thinking through this as logically as I can. I think it's a great opportunity as an investor for me in focus, as a trader for me on DSO, and as a holder for me on DSO. All right, so thinking through a little more really reasonably let's just pretend whatever and you know the sale has a, a lot of hype behind it um and then there is some selling into the end of the sale as people anticipate what i'm about to try to explain here to close this trade right say you're you say i don't actually want any liquid focus i know that if i have 100 d so i could stick them in to the bonding curve get my bonus, which yeah, it's locked, but it's like I've secured it. And then at the end of the sale, when the, the product goes live, I can sell and get all my DSO back, but I still get to keep that bonus. So you're essentially staking for an airdrop of future bonus fo focus tokens. I consider this like an arbitrage trade in a sense where, you know, you're loading up and then you're closing the position, but you're still getting to keep all of that bonus. That is going to be a trade. There's going to be a handful of people doing that. Uh, maybe a bigger than a handful of people. And so that's where I, and that's why I see price coming off near the end of the sale, probably because people will anticipate, this is how markets work, anticipating based on available information um, that as the sale ends and everyone has a chance to close that bonus arbitrage, arbitrage, arbitrade, um, trying to, you know, get rid of their liquid focus tokens but keep the bonus um so point is when the sale closes some amount of that focus will be instantly sold back into the bonding curve that DSO will be claimed back out of the bonding curve and presumably in many cases will be sold so upon closing of the sale i do expect based on the game theory and how it's working out um that price go down and and i don't think go down from here i think it's going to go up in between and then come off at the end and so I was talking through this with a buddy and it, it, we, we both kind of agreed that it should go up quite a bit throughout the sale and it should come down quite a bit into the end of and through and post sale as those trades get closed out. But I think the floor will be higher. I, I think this consolidation, that's why I kept buying it because I was like, there's going to be so much hype, so much awareness. It is absolutely a fucking killer L1. And I'm looking at it like chomping at the bit. You guys know in the pit, I won't shut up about it. And I'm on stream now for the third stream in a row talking about it. And I think that awareness grows to a point where even if it comes off through the end of the sale and after the end of the sale, I think there's a new floor. I think there's a ocean of new holders that are seeing what I'm seeing. Now, here's a fun thing that's going to also fuel that higher floor. And that is staking. Q1 2024 revolution, their new staking POS protocol uh, 
going live, moving from POW to POS. And there's a really good thread on that. I'm going to try to find you guys right now so you can read from the man's mouth. From the man's mouth. Is that what you say? From the horse's mouth. Isn't that the thing? Your kids are saying these days. Here it is. Uh, here it is. Okay. Yes. Boom. So the next phase of DSO, Revolution Proof of Stake and BitCloud 2.0. So this is from March. Um, you can probably find more recent posts, but this really gets into the proof of stake stuff. And I would look up their proof of stake if I were you. It's going to be a big factor. Now, here's where I think that they're brilliant in their timing. Because just say sometime through this, POS staking goes live. By the way, the unstaking period is like two to three hours. Solana, it's like two days. Cosmos, it's 21 days. I just got confirmation this morning that the unstaking period for DSO will be something like two to three hours. But just say that that staking goes live somewhere through this. That's really going to mitigate the potential end game here that I was seeing, you know, based on purely the sale dynamics. Um, that should mitigate a good amount of this, right? There's a good amount of this coming off near the end of the sale. Like there's going to be traders. Traders are going to trade. They're going to see this. They're going to say, hey, I can game this trade. People are going to buy it. Then eventually they may want to sell it to close out their bonus arbitrage. I can front run them because I won't be in the bonding curve in the sale. So I'll just buy it. Later on in the sale, I'll sell it. There's a trade. Yeah. So there's going to be some amount of this. But through the marketing, the hype, the awareness that comes from this entire sale period. And then, of course, sticking the staking in somewhere in the middle. Um, TLDR, I think there's three trades here. One is to just trade DSO price action. Two is to buy the focus token because I think it's going to do fantastic because there's a whole other world. We could talk about that like for a year. There's not a whole lot of float uh, like incentives. So all the focus that's in circulation for the first year will basically be bought at this uh, sale, which will all have an infinite bid sitting there in the market. So presumably in DSO terms, you can't really be underwater in year one. And that's a pretty powerful thought, especially when you consider the incentive model they've built in and the growth model and the go-to-market strategy. Oh, so trade one, trading DSO price action through the sale. Trade two, investing in this focus token, which I, I am going to be doing. I think it's going to be a, a great trade through the next year and beyond. Uh, the beyond part is yet to be seen based on traction, but I think for the first year, it's a dunk. And then... The third trade would be to, to arbitrage this bonus, right? Get a bunch of DSO early. The key to that is early. If you come in up here, wherever the up here is, maybe it's just 100, whatever. Um, but if you come in late in the sale to buy a whole bunch, to just grab that bonus, and then as soon as the sale ends, you rush to sell it and get back to your USDC, I'd be willing to bet dollars to donuts you'll be down versus USDC. You'll get your DSO back one-to-one. -one. And so... There will be an ocean of people coming in late as they all do in markets. That's where tops come in. Anyways, the third trade is the, the bonus arbitrage where it's like, get the DSO, slam it into the sale, lock in that bonus, sale closes, get your DSO back, get the funds back. Nice. Now you have a four-year locked bag of DSO, should it ever, or a focus. So three trades. Exactly what to do with the DSO I have and some USDC I have and what and how to basket that. Um, I think most of my DSO is destined to be staked, in which case I might as well slap it into the sale, get the focus for it, um, get the bonus for it. And then once the sale goes live, there is definitely some amount of my DSO that I will probably redeem back into the bonding curve, or excuse me, focus back into the bonding curve, get my DSO back, stake that, right? So I'm going to like buy more focus than I actually want, pull some of that DSO back out and stake it, have a, an enlarged bonus on my focus, have a nice liquid bag of focus as well. And then the question is on the back end, say on Coinbase, is there some amount of DSO that I just want to like load up on here, sell through some kind of mania if it occurs during the sale, and then obviously have those funds available to buy some dips because I just want more DSO. <sighs> it's fun to talk about this thing, man. It's fucking awesome. So yes, Sean Pendleton, going back to your question, 30 minute rant ago, I am invested in DSO. And I think this whole sale and the design and the dynamic is providing 
three and possibly there's a fourth one i haven't thought of but just really interesting ways to interact with this token and the focus token and the sale bonding curve in ways that can be both um you know profitable short-term mid-term and long-term uh hey somebody said solo rt streams are the best streams that's very thoughtful that feels good thank you sir very kind made my day as entertaining as rt's quest mostly are he's a rock solid solo no doubt oh thanks man getting some love in the chat where is crypto messiah yeah he's around playing dad um we, we still get to chat once in a while and uh recently we heard we reached out to him and he said he'd be down to come on stream sometime so expect to see him before too long um okay let's take a look so anyways that's my big deso thought train um you know sometimes i feel dirty thinking and talking about a coin like this that i am so invested in mentally and in real like in reality um for the long term and then some part of what i just described talks about like buying it and selling it here but i'm a trader and there's a sale dynamic here that should play out in price action in the market so yeah i'm gonna buy and sell some um don't shoot the messenger and that's not the same as like being disloyal or selling your bags because uh i'm gonna be so long on diesel for a very significant amount of time so there's my disclaimer for anyone watching who's a major supporter of the long-term vision and is like rt talked about selling relax bro the good news is when someone like myself just say i bought here sold here extracting value from the diesel market well guess what I'm a big bro supporter. So that's probably capital and liquidity and stuff that's getting parked back into DSO at some future date. Uh, but but then I would have more DSO. You see what I did there? Increasing the bag. Um, the staking is going to be something like 20% APR. And then based on the stake weight of the network, that APR will go down. That does mean that short term DSO will become inflationary the max supply not stuck at 10.8 anymore it will inflate beyond that but if you are staked you are part of that inflation thereby in increasing your share of the network because if 100 percent of the DSO was staked then you're not increasing your share everyone's just collectively all growing together but because there's no chance of it 100 being staked you will in some small measure or big measure be increasing your percentage share of the network um and then eventually, because there is a fee burn model, once the usage spikes to a certain threshold, it will actually become deflationary. It's all very well thought out in this. Um, I'm going to put this into the uh, chat. Yeah. Zen is wasted because he's been taking a drink every time I say DSO. So um, thankfully, it's not, you know not too cringe of a word imagine there was like a name of a ticker that i was talking about so much anyways um so that's my big hot takes on DSO. it's up a little bit today that's nice to see um hnt ooh, i mean it's such a nice candle but you know the thing you have to remember is that this i mean it's an uptrend in some ways but on a lot of time frames it's a downtrend i i am happy to see this little green candle but for what it's worth uh i, I don't feel like this one's going to run away without me and if it does it does you know trade it don't marry it date it don't marry it um you know this this could be a trend reversal although these big red volume bars here suggest that there was like some measure of buying let's zoom in let's zoom in oh so there's some big buying here so yeah you zoom in you get a better picture i wonder what that was was there an announcement any of our twitter detectives able to suss out this looks like an announcement I'd be curious to know what that is. I did see something to do with Solana Mobile, like the Saga phone, and then maybe some like, it'd be kind of cool if there was like a Helium network integration where they were like, anyone with a Solana Mobile phone gets free everything, like data, talk, and text through Helium. Like, that'd be dope. Did they just announce that? I don't know. I feel like that's a no-brainer because there's only 20,000 phones and it's a massive marketing play and it would help them sell out their next batch of phones. Um, we should probably look into that but this looks like news pump which does not mean it has to come right off anyways um yeah maybe that's a big breakout on hnt who knows i'm not rushing to buy it though he is looking good today okay what, what we're gonna look at what's this one you guys keep talking about you kids these days 
Oh yeah, when ETH BTC bottom, and then Kevin Weiner in the chats asked about ETH BTC, which we should talk about because it is a uh, shifting paradigm taking place right now. Doesn't mean it's the end of an era, but it is certainly, um, you know, certainly something to talk about. Uh, Ethereum. From a purely technical point of view, this is fascinating to see because there is a stilt here. Um, and I believe this was like in 2021. I believe when we made that stilt, I was on stream talking about how that needs to get filled in. And of course, felt really stupid for a period of years because it has just been up only. And then we had the you know, dip. It didn't get filled in. And then we had the merge pump and it's been nothing but down since. Um, but on a purely technical level, this is like an inefficiency that should get filled. And it looks like we're coming in to fill it right now. Um, as far as like where volume has been traded on this pair, where you can expect to find support based on the volume profile, it's all the way down here, which happens to align with this support level that I drew uh, this morning and dropped in the pit. I think the next major area of interest would be the 618. And I think, I think there's a non-zero chance. <laughs> Guys love that one. Um, first off, this is a huge sweep level. So, you know, close the week back above and you have a trade against that low. I don't think that's where it ends, but just say you did want to trade that. Um, if we close the weekly back above this level and somebody wanted to like be long from there and risk to that low, I think there's a trade there, but that didn't work here. Didn't work here. It hasn't worked in a long time. It's a riskier trade because it's still a downtrend at that point, right? Uh, look at that. I forgot about this. The uh, RSI on the weekly. I mean, you could wait for that to happen, right? Probably want to see like a little momentum shift on a weekly time frame. It's kind of in bullish divergence right now, interestingly. Uh, unconfirmed to be clear, but it is kind of showing its first signs. So I think I think Scrotoshi, uh, Kevin Weiner in the chat here. Yeah, he's saying he thinks it bottoms very soon. Um, I would not be shocked, dude. I Look, it's, it's trading versus BTC. Right? I spent the first half of the stream talking about BTC coming into having basically been rallying for a year now, coming into like a major head catalyst. Um, yes, yes, yes. Major flows into the ETF, blah, blah, blah. Could just rip, rip higher on dominance over the years if it becomes this global reserve currency asset, blah, 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 store of value. I think that's very likely. How that affects dominance, how that affects ETH BTC, we'll find out. But as far as end of the move, you can kind of see it, right? It's like the crescendo. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. that would be sick. Smack into that level and then bounce and then just, but, but whatever happens, it's probably a period of consolidation after that. You can see it on most charts, right? Um, where like bottoms kind of are formed over time. Tops tend to come in a little bit quicker this thing was just like a big weird distribution and then this is also about the relationship between bitcoin and ethereum it's not really like a usd asset so it's going to behave somewhat differently but ultimately similar so yeah I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is near the end but i'll tell you what it's a downtrend the long downtrend since september 2022 really arguably even further back like november 2021 like it hasn't done anything since the highs except for noise. So, um, yeah, you know, dump soon, then bounce soon, but a period of consolidation before any, any chance of that. Um, and, and it's not just versus Bitcoin, you know, here, obviously this is trading against Bitcoin, but I, I think Ethereum dominance is just going to get diluted extremely hard over time by emergence of new L1s, alt L1s. Solana being the big one now, but there's a lot of others and there's a lot of others that haven't even launched yet that are incredibly strong. So ETH dominance was so high because it was the only game in town, right? You wanted smart contracts, you wanted DeFi, you wanted shitcoining on chain. Ethereum was the place to be. And whether or not you think it's going to stick around or whatever role you think it's going to play, it will be sharing the pie with a growing number of names. And honestly, a lot of those names have been designed and built from the ground up using the mistakes and things that were learned from Ethereum. Um, and so it stands to reason that they will be better objectively. And then of course it's like, 
how will the liquidity migrate will they gain the users uh, we like to think about ethereum as having the most users in crypto and it does but it doesn't have that many users on a global perspective and so what's the chain that's going to get the first billion user app is it going to be on ethereum nope it can't be i don't think it physically could be right and so yes there's some chains and they got to think about how we're going to grab users and steal liquidity and vampire attack ethereum but i think the bigger story is what chain is going to bring in from the outside right yeah some some ethereum users may come over but it's more like what's going to be that killer dap that just has users that don't even touch crypto don't know about crypto certainly have never used ethereum and they just joined that chain because that app runs so well and does something that can't be done on web2 you know there's going to be some winners like that um and i just don't think that that app in that moment and that thing will happen on ethereum all that to say long-term prediction on ethereum dominance is that it gets diluted and, and split up and chopped up what that says about usd eth price you know i'm sure it trends up over time to some extent uh, but on a pair pair basis like eth btc and eth soul and eth new chain um it's going to struggle that's just my objective take based on the user experience that i have had on that chain and the scaling inabilities that i have seen on that chain and then you look at vitalik's roadmap is very long term i mean it's going to be around maybe it becomes a settlement layer i love how that that pivoted recently some of the dot eths on on twitter were like it's a settlement layer guys it was never designed for humans to use <laughs> it's just an l2 settlement layer like maybe maybe or maybe it just can't be the thing that it wanted to be and now needs to be something that it can be. Anyways, not here to shit at anyone's soup. Just sharing my thoughts, my hot takes. Um, so Kevin Weiner saying ETH BTC bottoms very soon. I think there's a strong case we made for that. It's been going down for a year and a half. It's kind of into a crescendo moment here. Could be the case that the ETH BT or the, the Bitcoin spot ETF approval continues this final move and then just becomes like a deep spike and yeah picking some up there versus bitcoin could be a great trade if not for a bounce for a proper midterm reversal over the period of a year yeah, i think there's a strong case we made for that it's just not my style of trade to try to like rotate right there although there are some smart people that think the rotation from bitcoin back into e through this window of approval is like pretty great trade i'm not convinced i probably won't be doing that I definitely won't be doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush. That's not my trade. Uh, but if there's like a weekly W here, like we had back here, which is actually right when I started working here at Hero Labs and doing these streams was right here. Oh, could we find it? There was an old one. Do, do, do. Ah, it's probably not really worth the time it'll take to find it. Was it here? There was just an old chart. See, oh, it's got the grids on it still. I hadn't even, yeah. Here we were. So here I was being an ETH bull way back in the day. Um, what a sick retest that was. Anyways, yeah, I was this. I, I just remember that chart pattern because that's when I started doing these streams and tweeting on the Hero Labs account. Anyways, nostalgia. It's been a while. Today we reached a, a sixty-nine four twenty metric on our Twitter. Got to pull that up. It's my new pinned tweet for a while. Holla! Imagine, imagine nailing a sixty-nine on our four hundred and twentieth video. Come on, let's hear it in the chat. It took 1,325 days to pinpoint that. That's like landing on fucking Mars from Earth, you know? You're like, you got to nail the orbits. And then you set off. And then the spin of the Earth and the wind at Cape Canaveral. And, you know, that's rocket science right there. Shout out to the producer. Nailed it. Buying one ETH today and hopefully it grows enough to pay for my selling fees on the network near the top. Yeah, exactly. Beginning of the end for an era for sure. Yep, Soul is going to hammer away at ETH and Vitalik will try tapping out. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Vitalik will ever trap, tap, tap out. Like, I mean, he's he's such a sharp, smart, focused dude. I don't see any reason why he would like give up on ETH, um, except for just to keep iterating it, you know, forking it or whatever. 
upgrading it. Um, but I think there's some fundamental things that are always going to make it feel like suboptimal to the new stuff that's being built. And then e easily early on, people can look at that and say, well, yeah, but look at the new stuff. There's no users. It's like, of course not. They're new. Of course it has more users than Solana. Solana is newer, right? There wasn't much to do on Solana until six months ago. I mean, there was radium farms years ago, but y'all know what I'm saying. Bitcoin too, though. Yeah, it was supposed to be digital money. We actually used not digital gold. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Bitcoin pivoted too, right? It was designed as digital cash. And then the Bcash community decided, no, we can do it better and we're going to be Bcash. And now it's more like pivoted too. And I guess that's more just like the reality. Like these things will fall into the use case that they are best suited for. I don't think Bitcoin is good digital cash. I don't think that's a, even a debate anymore. It's not good digital cash. But it is a very good digital store of value. Its story is a digital store of value is very strong. And so that's fair, Coach Papa in the chat. We shouldn't shit on ETH, dot ETH, uh, you know, people like, let's not just write it off as cope. There are people too. And um, if it pivots to being a really, really good settlement layer, while the L2 is built around it and on top of it, and maybe one bridge hop away from it, <coughs> Solana, end up being the more user-friendly applications that can achieve what maybe it set out to do originally, then that's just the way this is going to evolve. And yes, there will still be a great need for a settlement layer, like a very secure one. And the cost and the speed won't matter as much. Digital gold is the sailor narrative. No one was pushing that before. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if he started it, but he certainly made it famous and he's certainly put the money in the mouth, <laughs> money where his mouth is. I've been watching since the first stream. Good content. Zen. I love you, man. Thank you. Man or lady. I'm assuming man, because 90% of us are in crypto. Let's be real. But uh, absolute legend, I agree. Thank you. Um, I feel like that's it for my overall rant theses today. I'm 17 minutes late for a market meeting with the fun, but they're used to that now on Tuesdays. So I should probably cut bait and run. Um, I'll just say this. Objectively, nah, let's just save that. ETH BTC on the weekly looks, or sorry, ETH USD on the weekly looks good. And total three on the weekly looks good. Um, but I feel like, for an unscripted rant today, a walkthrough of my thinking, my planning, the charts I've been looking at, the sentiment I'm seeing, the lead up into this massive catalyst, which absolutely I think will lead to mega, mega global inflows into Bitcoin in particular. And thus, Bitcoin is a gateway drug and that should trickle through the ecosystem, that should put us on the map, that should really validate our existence as an asset class. I'm so bullish on crypto long term um, and even for 2024, but I have moved very close to the exit through this event. And that is that I am in Bitcoin and I am in DSO. And then I have like a sprinkling, probably 15% of my portfolio is made up of various altcoins that are free positions. Uh, so I feel like they're de-risked and that way I'm only a couple of clicks from the exit. And for the record, DSO is not super liquid, so I'm not actually planning to be a click away from exiting that. I, I just can't exit the position that I'm in in any kind of one click, get in and out. Um, so when I say one or two clicks from the exit, I'm just talking about my Bitcoin. If I see the markers we discussed on this stream, you know, mania through the event, obviously a big dunk because you don't get to long that news and stay long. You're always going to get washed. And then there's a push up to highs on bear divs and there's just a bit of a stall up there. If that's how it plays out, I will be in cash for that portion of my portfolio. And I and then I'm just going to enjoy, you know, I'm going to chill. I'm going to look for opportunities. I'm going to hunt for some reload zones. I'm going to keep an eye out. And of course, price action between now and next week could change everything. And I'll be back to explain the latest. But for now, I'm feeling really good with positions. I'm really excited to see this thing come. Frankly, it's all so tiresome. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to having a Bitcoin ETF in the United States so that we can talk about new things. Thanks for coming by today, guys. Like the video if you haven't already. Hit us with a sub. Hit me up in the pit. Tag me if you want to chat or on Twitter. Until next time, whatever you do, always play for position strength. Take care.